There's an old saying, if you know how it thinks, then you know how it works. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at the secrets behind files in Microsoft 365. Where are they stored? How are they stored? How do you protect them? And more importantly, how you can manage them all. So stay tuned and I guarantee you're going to learn something here. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. So nice to see you, and if this is your first visit, then you are so welcome and fantastic to have you here. Now, if you enjoyed the session, of course, please bump the like button. It really does make a difference to my channel. And if you've not subscribed, then hit that subscribe button. I'm well on my way to 20K. I really appreciate every single one of you that comes and join us. Now, in this episode, I thought I would take a look at some of the secrets behind files and uh, in Microsoft 365. And specifically, I want to talk about how they're stored, how they're managed, and of course, how they're protected. So at the end of the session, it's gonna be a busy session, so stick with me. Make sure you watch the entire video because there's gonna be a lot of information uh, in this. Now, uh, as well as that, I'm also gonna time code the session. So once you've watched it, if you need to come back and of course watch a, a particular bit, then hopefully you'll find that useful. All right, now if you've got any questions about this or any of my other sessions, then just get them down below and I will do my absolute best for you and if you've not subscribed to the channel then please hit that subscribe button ring the bell and come and join uh, this uh, great community that I'm trying to build out all right so without any further ado I think it's about time we get to the demos let's take a look So to understand the secrets behind Microsoft 365 and to know how it thinks, you need to know, first of all, where and how your data is stored. Actually, it's stored in a place like this. This is one of the numerous Microsoft data centers around the world. And typically, these data centers are paired. So, for example, in Europe, we have Dublin and Amsterdam. And the idea is that the, in the European Union, your data is replicated between these two data centers. In the US, we have a number of different data centers, again, for replication within the US, in Germany, in Norway, in the UK, in China, and so on. And the idea is that for government, financial, and potentially sensitive information, where data is not permitted to go beyond the country's border, uh, Microsoft makes sure that the data that you store in your own data center never leaves the boundary of your country. So just how does Microsoft keep your data safe? Well, for example, this is a typical data center. When you save, let's say, a document from OneDrive, it's stored in, an, on a disk in the data center. That disk is mirrored to a second disk, and the rack is also mirrored to a second rack. That is then mirrored to a sister data center. And of course, we also have scheduled backups, which occur regularly. On top of that, of course, you've also got things like recycle bins and you can uh, undelete your data if something goes horribly wrong. So for example, uh, you have the 30 day recycle bin with a secondary 63 day recycle bin for a total uh, of 93 days. So let's have a quick look at some of the technologies that keep you safe then in Microsoft 365. Um, one of the first things that you need to know is teams and groups. So obviously a user has all of their files. And the first thing that you need to know is uh, where are these files stored? Technically, all of these are stored in SharePoint. SharePoint uh, document libraries, if you're in groups and teams, and individually, they go into your OneDrive for business. Now, um, from a technical standpoint, OneDrive for business is SharePoint. It's the same technology. 
But either way, your data is going to be stored either in a database or files on a hard drive in the data center. Now, um, if they're stored as files in a data center, of course, they're at rest, they're also encrypted. Now, I did mention uh, recycle bins. So of course, we know that every user has access to the recycle bin. But one thing that you might not know, so for example, uh, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to come into a typical um, Microsoft team. This is, of course, also a Microsoft 365 uh, group. Um, now, if you've not seen my video on teams and groups, then please go ahead and uh, check that out. So I'm going to open up this particular website. I just want to show you. So typically, we all know that anything that's deleted goes into a recycle bin. All right. And it will typically go into the recycle bin for 30 days. OK, and that's how it thinks. Now, the in addition to that, if I just go in here to the recycle bin, I don't have anything at the moment, but look at this. Can't find what you're looking for. Check out the second stage recycle bin. Now, the second stage recycle bin holds your data for a further 63 days. So how long does Microsoft 365 keep your data for? 93 days. Now, of course, anything beyond those 93 days, you're going to need to think about archiving. And of course, archiving, we look at that in Microsoft Purview or the new Compliance Center. I'm going to cover that momentarily. Now, just before I go there, I want to show you just a couple of other little secrets in SharePoint. Um, now, um, we used to have a OneDrive admin center that doesn't exist anymore. And those settings are in the settings menu in the SharePoint admin center. And if I go into here, you'll see that we've got something that says storage limits. And as you know, by default, every customer gets a terabyte of storage in 365. Ah, but what you might not know is actually you get a lot more than that. So by default, it's 1024, but you can increase this to 5096. In other words, five uh, gigabytes of data or five terabytes rather. OK, um, and you can see here that it just says, yes, you can increase it up to this amount. Actually, what they don't tell you is that there is a secret extension on this. So you could actually, and it goes up in specific increments, it goes up to the likes of 10 terabytes and potentially 25 terabytes. And you can also do something similar in Microsoft SharePoint as well. And that's what we call an undocumented feature. So, of course, many of us now live in a compliance based world. And that means that depending on the industry that you're in, so business, finance, legal, military, whatever, you may need to keep copies of your data for a certain amount of time. And compliance is in becoming increasingly important. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going into the Compliance Center in Microsoft 365, which, of course, was recently renamed as Purview. Now, I've done a number of sessions, a number of videos on these various technologies. So this is going to just be a very quick kind of overview here. So a couple of things that really come to mind in terms of protecting those files and protecting your data um, really can be found here. So taking a look at retention policies, we've got a couple of things here. Now, just before we create the retention policies, you've got labels and label policies. And this is how data loss prevention policies can integrate with 365. And again, I'll cover that in a moment. We also have a new feature here called Adaptive Scopes. So you can see here that I've created an adaptive scope. OK, I can uh, go in and have a look at the scope details and the scope details. All I've done here 
is I have created what we call a dynamic rule. And I'm basically saying, okay, anybody who's in the sales department, so display name sales is automatically going to be a member of this group, all right? And it's really, really easy to set up. I can go in, I can edit this policy, and you can say, I, you know, I want these users, these SharePoint sites, or these Microsoft 365 groups. And all I've done here, as I've said, okay, the dis I've said display name equals sales. So anybody who's in the department of sales will automatically come under this scope. All right. And that's a really nice feature. So now when we go back to the actual retention policy, um, I can create a new retention policy and I'm going to call this my Oslo sales retention. Um, oops, would help if I could spell it right. Uh, retention policy. Okay. And I'm going to click next and you can see I can either choose static so with static, you can choose which mailboxes, which SharePoint sites, which accounts, which groups you want to manage, or alternatively, you can choose an adaptive option. So here I can say, right, I want to add the scope. And of course, I have this Oslo scope that I've just created, and this will add in the salespeople. So you can see here that I'm anybody who's in sales, any groups, it's going to retain their data. And I can say, okay, how long do I want to retain the data for? For the purpose of this demo, I'll say, let's say one year. Okay. Now, a couple of things. Um, when do you want to save the data? When the item was created? or when the item was last modified. So what's the difference, Andy? Well, when the, when the item was created, let's say today is, let's say the 4th of August or the 10th of August, let's say. Well, this would be retained till the 10th of August, 2023. Now, if you choose, let's say modified, um, and I modified this on the 1st of December, it would be retained until the 1st of December, 2023. After that time period, what do you want me to do? So beyond that, delete the items automatically. It will then go into the recycle bin system that I spoke about earlier. So stage one recycle bin, 30 days. Stage two for a further 63 days. All right. Or alternatively, I could say don't do anything. Now, what that means is Within this period, within the retention period, if a user tried to delete something, it would not be emptied from the recycle bin. You understand? Um, however, at the end of the recycle bin period, the, the item is not deleted, but because there's no recycle bin policy, uh, or retention policy rather, I could then go in and delete it. Okay. The other option is retain forever. Now, if you do retain forever, it, what you're essentially doing is putting that item on legal hold. And that means it will never be deleted. The other one is only delete items once they reach a certain age. Okay. Again, either when they were created or from when they were last modified. Okay. So that's how retention works in Microsoft 365. Okay, so once I click on uh, submit, I have now gone ahead and I've now created my retention settings. So again, where is that picked up? Well, if I go back into my admin center and let's say I go back into my groups, so if I go in back into teams and groups and active teams and groups. So any of the, the groups that have got the word sales in, you can see that that policy will now pick, pick it up. So retention policies, incredibly important. Now, 
Um, the other thing just to mention here is in here, this is where you can also import content into Microsoft 365. And you can either import content by using the SharePoint import. There's also tools in Exchange, but you can also ship drives to uh, Microsoft as well. Uh, and Microsoft will then import the drives for you. And you can find details of that uh, here. So the big question that I always get asked is how can I protect my stuff from prying eyes? And it all starts here. This is the OneDrive Admin Center. Now, the one thing that you need to understand is whether it's OneDrive Admin Center, whether it's a SharePoint document library, it's all SharePoint. So technically, it's the same technology. They're just stored in different places and in different ways. But the technology is the same. So what I've got here is you can see that I've got my document library here and you can see that we have my files, any files that have been shared with you. You've also got that recycle bin that I mentioned earlier and you can see that I've got quick access to various groups and teams that I've got access to. You can also download the OneDrive app here specific to your operating system, of course. So what I've gone uh, and done is I've created a folder. I've got a folder here called demo and within the folder, I've just popped in a couple of uh, documents here. All right. Now, a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, let me just go back to the demo. So I'm caught sharing that demo is pretty simple. I can just go in here and um, I can type in a group. So I've got a user called Alan. I'm going to bring in Alan. I might bring in Adele um, and I might bring in Bianca. OK. There we go. So I can I can decide I can stick in a little message um, and you can see at the moment people within a datum, which is my company, can link and edit this document. Now, there are diff very important. There are different levels of sharing access, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment. All right. So I can send uh, an invite to these users if I want to now. Um, if you want to change that, so at the moment we've set this up to edit, but you might not want that. You might want to say, okay, anyone with this link and you can see that that's grayed out. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but people in a datum with this link or people with existing access, what's the difference here? I'm going to explain that in a moment. Now you can also see block download and that this is grayed out. It's because at the moment you're allowing editing. But if I take that checkbox out, you'll notice that I can now block the download. What does that mean? That means that you can view the document online. And if you've got right access, you can edit the document, but you're not allowed to download a copy. And this is particularly useful. Let's say you've got salespeople. You don't want potentially rogue salespeople downloading to their personal devices. So this is a really useful feature. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to allow editing and I'm going to click onto that. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send that invitation. Now, um, one thing that you need to understand is um, permissions are often cumulative. So what does that mean? Well, let's say, for example, whatever the default, this is my OneDrive here. OK, this is my OneDrive. So any permissions set at the top level, think of it like a filing cabinet, will typically waterfall down to the next level. Right. So if I go in here and I'm, I can say I want to manage access. And again, you've got that same link here as well. And you can also grant direct access to specific users. And you can see I've got that at the moment. Um, but you'll also see I can share that. So it's the same thing as before. And you can also put time restrictions on this as well. I'm sure you've seen that where you can put a, a date restriction on something. Now, one thing that's really nice is I can also go in and again, if I manage access to this, 
Um, if you notice here, you've also got advanced settings. And this takes us into the, this is the older admin center for SharePoint. So this is our SharePoint admin center. And you can see here, the folder has unique permissions. And that means that the permissions are not waterfalling down. All right, so I can select each of these users and if I want to change those permissions in any way, uh, I can do that. And you can see this is, uh, I can click into here and you can see exactly what you've shared you, with your users. And this is a great feature. This is called Microsoft Delve. It's one of those kind of hidden features, but you can see instantly um, that you can uh, communicate with users, you can see what files have been shared with you and so on. Okay, now just heading back to that kind of advanced tab, so just go back here for a second. So looking at the permissions here, you can check permissions. And again, you can check permissions for different users. Um, and it, you can put in, for example, a username here. So I can say, you know, Adele, um, uh, and I can say, right, um, I want to know what permissions Adele's got. And it will show you, it will give you a list uh, of permissions and it will say, yep, I want to go ahead. I want to check now. And you can see at the moment, she's got limited access to this uh, folder and she's also she can contribute so in other words as a contributor she can't delete and, and so on so there are different levels of permissions now the other thing you can also edit the links that the user has got here and you can also delete any unique permissions and start again but likewise, you can also create permissions as well. And you can, you can see this is another way uh, to create that same shared uh, option that we had earlier. And you can see that we have different options with different permission levels, okay? Now, understanding how files work is really important in SharePoint and OneDrive and Teams, because remember every file in Microsoft 365 is stored here. Full control means you've got everything, complete control. Design, edit, and contribute means that you can add and edit a document, but you can't delete it. Read access is exactly as it says, and restricted view means that you can just see the name of the files, but you can't open them, all right? So um, again, really important that you understand that. Now, when we talked about kind of default permissions, something that's quite interesting um, and to, that I definitely need to show you this, um, I'm gonna pop back in to just close that OneDrive down. I'm gonna come back into my admin center here and again, this is a topic I've covered before, but you definitely want to be familiar with this. Um, if I go into SharePoint, and in SharePoint here, we have something called policies. And within the policies, we have the sharing options. And you can see, remember the anyone option? When I tried to share that, it was grayed out. This is your tenant level uh, settings, all right? So we have basically four options. So anyone can share. Now the problem with this is if you set this, it means that if I share this with you, you can then share it with somebody else. So I lose control. I don't know who you're sharing this with. Um, the second option is new and existing guests. So for example, in Microsoft Teams, this means that you can go ahead and you can invite this and you can send the link to somebody within your company or outside your company, okay? And by the way, um, again, guest access, it adds them in to your Azure Active Directory as a guest user. The other more restrictive option is that you can't invite new people. The people must already exist in your directory or the least permissive, only people within your organization, 
all right? Now, you can set that up at the tenant level, but just to show you from an admin perspective, if I go into admin sites, you can see here we've got all our different teams and groups and so on. So for example, if I go into Oslo here and I click onto policies, you can see that again, I can go into external sharing and I, can, I can't use everyone because it's set at the tenant settings, but I can make it even more restrictive. So I can say, okay, only existing guests within my company, all right? Um, and that is so important, folks, that you understand that feature, okay? So for my next topic, one topic is really super important for protecting content. And this is data loss prevention policies. I like to refer to it as data leakage prevention. Now I have done dedicated sessions on this topic before, but, and if you want to take a look at those and please do so. Um, okay, so it all starts here um, and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create a policy. And typically what we do is there are a number of different templates that you can use. And again, depending on the industry that you're in. So for example, if I chose financial and scroll down, I've got a number of different templates here that I can uh, use. And let's say for example, I'm a bank or a financial organization. You can see here that it's saying, okay, do you want to protect credit card information, debit card numbers, and so on? It might be medical records. It might be social security information. So I'm going to say, yep, I want to protect um, this. And what this does is it prevents the data from leaking outside your organization. All right. Uh, I'm going to click next. Now, by default, I'm going to use everyone or you can choose specific groups, specific teams, devices. If you're managing different groups of devices, for example, in Intune, you can do that as well. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just gonna leave it at the default and I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. Now, one thing that you can do is, of course, you can just accept this, but you can also customize it as well. So. For example, if you want to add additional features, um, you can do that uh, too. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on next, and you can see it says, okay, when the content matches the condition, um, you might want to send a tooltip, so a little pop-up tooltip that appears at the top of the message, or you might want to customize an email, so you can customize, you know, you might want to say to a salesperson, hey, you know, um, you've put a credit card in the email. Are you really sure you want to send that? So again, I can say, um, send, you can send incident reports to various people. Um, you can customize the email. So I can put in the, the notify the user who shared it but also notify these other people as well. So for example, the owner of the content and so on. All right. Now you'll notice here, it says show a policy tip. Now you've got two things that you can do, or it works in two ways. One, if you don't do a policy tip, uh, you basically what you're saying is, I'm sorry, you're trying to send a credit card information. This is just not allowed. Boom. It's not permitted. All right. Alternatively, if you decide to say, yeah, I'm going to show a policy tip. And again, you can uh, customize this. So I can type in a uh, warning. I can say um, you are sending sensitive data. Yes, you might say that and it will then notify uh, the user. OK. Um, Okay, and again, you can do the same with policy tips. So if if they do try and send an, uh, an email that's got this text, or if it's contained within a spreadsheet or a Word document, they will be, they will be told, 
Okay. Now, as I mentioned, you've also got incident reports that you can do. And you can also then say, ah, this is important here, see? So if it detects that this sensitive information, what do you want me to do? I want to either restrict access or encrypt the content, okay? So again, really important. And you can say, yep, yeah, I want to block people outside my organization. Uh, and then you've got some options. Remember what I just said? Now, if you've got a tooltip, it says override here. And so if I try and send a credit card information in, in an email, um, if that's disabled, that basically means, I'm sorry, you can't send that out. But if you click this, a salesperson might come in and say, yeah, you need to put in a reason why you're sending out. And this is then audited. So this allows the user to override the setting. All right. Now, just before I go very quickly, um, you've also got some endpoint settings here. Endpoints, of course, are your devices. So for example, you might want to put in some file exclusions. So yes, you can share files, but not from this location, not on this particular device, um, not using this particular application and so on. So definitely take a look at this area here for data loss prevention policies. So for the final piece of the puzzle for this, we want to take a look in information protection. Now, information protection, you might call it labeling and classification. Uh, it used to be known as Azure information protection. If you had Windows Server, it was often intermixed with file classification services and rights management. Typically, it works like this. I can come in here and I can create a label. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna say, okay, um, this is my uh, sales confidential, okay? So it's sales confidential, oops, would help if I could spell it correctly. Um, Okay, so this is my sales confidential. I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that into the other fields here. Now, I'm gonna then click next and just a couple of things here, define the scope. So again, configuration settings for things like emails, um, SharePoint files, OneDrive files, items, and so on. Um, it also works with purview as well. So things like schematized data assets, for example, databases and SQL and so on. Um, you'll notice that the uh, groups option, so we also have an option that you can label uh, groups and sites. So just to do that, you need to go in here. It takes you into this document and there are, if I just scroll right down here, you can see it's really, really simple um, and it explains exactly how it works. There is just a series of PowerShell scripts. So you just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and that then will enable the feature. So I would need to then log off and log back in again, go back into the feature, and this would be then highlighted. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just saving time. All right. So what do I want to do? Do I want to encrypt items or do I want to mark items? You know what? I'm going to do both here. Okay. I'm going to say next. Um, do you want to configure the encryption settings so I can either set default permissions? So anything that's confidential, um, I can either assign permissions, for example, read only, for example, or I could let the users change their own uh, permissions. Okay. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to let the users um, assign their own permissions. Okay. And you could do things like an Outlook where, for example, you can encrypt the messages or you can simply say, 
you're not allowed to forward this message. So anything that's got the word sales confidential, they're not allowed to forward the message. Okay, likewise in Word and Excel, it will prompt the user to set the permission. If your system supports it, it will also support something called double key uh, encryption as well. Now, do you want to mark the content? So you could add a watermark through the document. You could add a document header. Uh, and again, I can come in here and I can say, yep, yeah, this is sales uh, confidential. It's size 12 and I'm going to put this in red in the center of the screen and I'm going to click on save. All right. I now click on next. Now I just showed you data loss prevention policies. So if you click into this, um, you can then say, okay, add a condition. So if it contains one of those templates, credit card numbers, things like that, then it will automatically apply this label. What I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to let your users manually assign the label. So I'm not going to allow that option. Now, the groups and sites, again, is grayed out because of what I just told you a moment ago. And again, I'm not going to bother with the rest of it. So now that I've created the label, I just click on uh, create the label and the next thing that you need to do is you need to publish the label now just a quick word of warning about this um, you can either publish it yeah and it what it will do is it will create a policy all right now the problem with this is if you create if you keep doing that you will have one label one policy and you'll have like 50 labels and 50 policies so once you've created one policy, which I already have, I'm going to say, no, don't create the policy, just create the label. So now I'm going to go into label policies and let's say this is my highly confidential policy. I can now edit this policy, click on edit and look at what we have now. You now have the sales confidential label and I've now added it to this policy and click on next. And it's then going to apply to the users and groups that you've configured. Um, and you've got some options here as well. Are you going to allow the users? Do you want the label to be a default label? Do you want the users to be able to change labels and things like that? So you've got those. Again, you can set a default label. I'm not going to bother with that here. OK, um, so again, I'm just going to accept the default settings, click on next and I'm going to update that. And there we go. So how does that work? Well, if you'd set up encryption in emails and so on. Now, what we simply do is I'm going to go back to my office home page and I'm going to open up a document uh, in Word Online, but it's also available in um, Microsoft Word, so the actual installed version of Microsoft Word, and here it is. So here is what we see. We see the the sensitivity uh, category here, and what we can do is I can click onto the drop down arrow, and here is my labels. Now you're probably saying, Hangde, why is that label not appeared yet? It can take a little bit of time just to come through, but in time. And if I have the right permissions, that those labels will then appear. So I can now assign a label uh, to this uh, document. So this document has now been labeled. OK, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do information protection in Microsoft 365. So there you have it, the file secrets that lie within Microsoft 365. We spoke about where they're stored and how they're stored. We spoke about managing them, sharing them, and we also spoke about security and compliance. Hopefully that gave you an insight into everything and how it worked. Now, as I mentioned, some of the topics I've covered in more in depth in other videos on my channel. So please feel free to go and explore them and check them out. All right. 
Now, if you've enjoyed the session, hit bump that like button. It really does make a difference, folks. And if you've not subscribed, come on, help me get to that 20K. Bump that uh, subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on future tutorials. And of course, I love your comments, your questions, and your feedback. So please just get them down below and come and join our great community. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much. And uh, you stay safe. And I'll see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.